What's going on, Melon and Fitness Nation? So here I am, Leslie, the owner of Melon and Fitness Nation, and I get to interview Leslie. How freaking exciting is that? A Leslie and a Leslie. Oh, this is going to be so fun. <laughs> so welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much for allowing us to share space with you virtually, and thank you so much for taking time to share a little bit about your fitness journey with us. So thank you for having me. Let's kick this off. I'm going to put you on my timer. You're going to have one minute to tell us anything you want to about yourself. It can be where you're born. It doesn't have to be fitness related. It could be about your personal life. It could be about your work life. And we're going to get this party started in like 10 seconds. And you're okay. only going to have 60 seconds to do this. So this is always exciting. So go. Hi, my name is Leslie Benson. Um, and I came to fitness um, kind of roundabout way, um, started out in corporate America, like most, most people do, and found that I just didn't fit in. So a um, little soul searching there, wanted to figure out what the last half of my career could look like. Uh, and I started off in personal training, um, but then for a, very quickly realized um, that was only an hour of my client's day. So I wanted to be able to impact the other 23 hours. So I pursued um, a certification as a health coach. Um, and that's what I get to do now. I have, get to talk to a lot of people about how to make small changes, but sustainable changes in their lives. I um, also love to work with people who have type 2 diabetes. That is one of my favorite topics um, to help people with. So that's me. Perfect. That was great. That was a minute on the dot. So you are definitely prompt with time. So I love it. So let's get into it. So tell us a little bit about what you did in corporate America and what made you switch to being a health coach now. Okay. Well, I started out in HR. Um, I worked in various areas of human resources. The last specialty was compensation. Um, and I really enjoyed what they call the carrot and the stick, right? So you, how to incentivize sales representatives to perform. Okay. Um, it was very interesting work, um, but left me feeling that wasn't my purpose um, because I was working with a lot of high performing individuals, to be quite honest, making a lot of money. And if they were missing $5, they would explode. They would scorch the earth <laughs> looking for you. Uh, so um, I didn't think those values were, were long, long term for me. Um, also, as uh, I work with a lot of uh, women of color in corporate now, and what I experienced a lot of was being labeled as too aggressive right? If I told people the truth in a meeting, um, I, I, was, I was labeled that. Um, even I was told I made someone cry in a meeting. And I, today, to this day, I don't really believe that. <laughs> I just think I said something she didn't necessarily want to hear. Mm -hmm. So um, being in an organization where it was uh, more advantageous to be 20 years old, and I was 40 something at the time, knowing that my future was short um, in this environment. So really had a desire to build my own path. You know, I wanted to be able to be an entrepreneur and work for myself. Um, and my husband was very supportive um, in that effort. Um, but I think that was really the catalyst, feeling like that I didn't, I didn't fit in and it wouldn't be something that I could sustain long-term. I wasn't going to be the head of HR or the head of compensation. Um, so trying to find my own path where I felt I would add value. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. So you have contact with so many people. So tell me how, I guess, it touches you or moves you to help somebody of color, somebody that looks like you. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's that's so exciting. And some of my contract work, I never know who the person is until they show up to their first meeting with me. 
So I, when I open the session and see someone that looks like me, I'm, I'm already so excited to help them in whatever way that I can, um, especially around things like high blood pressure, um, type two diabetes, high cholesterol, because we all know that those things are affected by lifestyle changes. And, you know, some folks that look like me, they think that those diagnoses are permanent. I'm always going to have high blood pressure. I'll just take these pills and, you know, go on with my life kind of thing. But what I've come to understand in my work is we are delicate. Our systems don't respond to all, all types of medicine or all types of intervention. So we have to be extremely careful about how we treat our bodies because things that affect Caucasians affect us in different ways. And so to be able to say to someone, hey, let's just make a few changes. Don't throw, throw out your whole diet. Let's just try to remove one thing, move a little bit more one day or the next day. And for them to trust me that the process works and for us to figure out what works for them on an individual basis, keeping culture in the mix too. So I don't tell everybody eat chicken and broccoli because you know what? <laughs> you don't all eat that. <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. I have to be cognizant of where, where my client comes from and meet them where they're at. And so that really, I really get excited when I see someone that looks like me on the other end of the screen and to know that they chose me for that reason so that they thought maybe that, that I would understand that I would be able to not just tell them what they should be doing, but what's going to make sense for them as an individual. Nice. Nice. So tell us about your workout style. Are you a CrossFitter? Are you a hip person? Are you a boot camp? You like spin yoga? Tell us a little bit about what you like to do. So first it's probably CrossFit. Um, but because I'm one of your senior members, I just turned 52. <laughs> Um, there's, there's some nice. things, thanks. There are some things that in CrossFit that I would never be able to do. I've also had cervical spine surgery, so I don't get upside down. <laughs> so things like that. Um, but I do love the style of CrossFit. I love weightlifting, um, even started to follow some power lifters. I'm not sure if I'm going to compete at, uh, at any point. Um, but I just love the concept of getting stronger. I am not fast, but I do run just not quickly. Um, but okay. I just, I really love picking up heavy stuff and putting it down. So that's, that's nice. Fun. And I have to say black don't crack because we would have <laughs> never known how old you are. That's just the thing. I just had to say it. I mean, cause people are waiting. They're probably going to be waiting to like say she's how old. So, okay. Okay. I like it. Thank so tell you. me how long you have been a part of the CrossFit world and tell me what you think about CrossFit when it comes to people of color. Mm, interesting. So I was introduced, <laughs> I was introduced to CrossFit in 2013. Okay. So I was, I'd already lost um, probably 60 pounds and a trainer at my fitness center she would put us through these mini, what she called CrossFit workouts. And I really liked the high intensity of it. And so went looking around for boxes and found one in my neighborhood uh, and was happy there uh, for some time, even being the only person of color there. Um, but unfortunately ran into some bullying. Um, so I, changed uh we a bunch of us changed gyms um in 2017 so i've been at my last box here for five years and it's very welcoming again i'm one of probably two people of color um at my gym but it's also very liberal so we do have okay. our conservatives but they know that they they are the minority okay. so i feel very comfortable there um, as far as the, the sport of CrossFit, um, I, when I first was introduced, I tried watching the games. Um, I follow Elizabeth Akinwale. I love her. Um, but I also, um, 
appreciated her sharing her experience, um, which I have noticed at competitions um, as well. CrossFit is very much white guys, right? So, you know, it's very difficult to, you know, feel comfortable in those spaces, especially because they call it elite fitness. So that being said, you know, you feel like you have, it's an intimidating environment to come into. And I think that there are a lot of myths about CrossFit. One being, you can go to any box and feel, feel welcome. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> that just, mm -hmm. that just doesn't happen. Um, I've only been in a few different States, but I came to know on vacation, I don't try to find a box. Um, it's mm. just, I've been in one in Chicago. I've been to one in uh, upstate New York. The one in Vegas I went to um, was small enough that the owner was, was running class that day and he was very welcoming. Um, but otherwise, I think that's a myth. Um, and as far as CrossFit as a corporate, you know, it's a company, um, they're, you know, not really all that interested in developing uh, people of color as their athletes, which I feel like it's a missed opportunity um, because you have, you know, really strong kids in, in high school that are starting to use CrossFit as their, you know, the way that they improve their Catalyst. sports. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, we've got, you know, kids that, that work out with us that play soccer, they play lacrosse and they all say that their game has been elevated due to CrossFit. So mm -hmm. why not, you know, try to develop, you know, kids to move better, move more safely and get stronger and get better at their sport. Um, and that includes us too, but mm -hmm. um, CrossFit is not, does not, Kate does not, is not understanding or does not care too much about um, people of color as a group. They gave some lip service to it maybe a year or two, two years ago, but um, the masses, you know, could really care less about people of color. That's my opinion. Nice. So if you're in Georgia, I'm inviting you to my box. At Thank my you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am very welcoming, but I also coach part-time. So you are also welcome there as well too. Um, and I can completely understand. So with that, I do have a follow-up question for you. Mm -hmm. um, it is probably a little bit more challenging than some of the other questions I've asked, but what do you think it will take or what type of conversations do we need to facilitate for non-melanin gym owners to be more welcoming for people of color? Mm. Well, Leslie, that's a good question because <laughs> this, as a corporate entity, they are the same as Bank of America or you know mm -hmm. any, any other large organization that you can point to and say, how, how many executives are people of color? How many, you know, so you, if you have the numbers and then you say, well, how do we get more inclusive? How do we be that company that people of color will want to gravitate to? And the same thing that those companies are being told, you have to have a welcoming environment. If, if it, you know, you get um, 10 or 15 applicants that are people of color, but then they come and work in their department and there's no one that looks like them or, you know, cares about what their particular interests might be or where they shine, you know, as professionals, then we have the same problem in CrossFit as well. I don't see anyone that, at the forefront of their organization that's, that's someone of color. So all we, and all I know is that, you know, people pay to be affiliates, but are we, do we have CrossFit gyms in predominantly uh, colored neighborhoods, people of color? Probably not. <laughs> what's the, what's the uh, affiliate fee? So $3,000, I believe. Exactly. So does, you know, a small gym owner, do, do they have do they have the resources to be able to 
open a small gym in a predominantly black neighborhood? Are they gonna be able to get enough members to sustain that affiliate fee? So what is what CrossFit would need to do to have us get a seat at the table? And like I said, you have to, it has to matter to you. And I don't think that it does, even though our money is just as green as everyone else's. And mm -hmm. we know that, you know, we will pay for things we feel are valuable. Mm -hmm. So if you make it an experience that people value, we will come just like anyone else. But if the opportunity is not there, then, you know, Planet Fitness wins out, right? Because it's $10 Correct. a month. Correct. You're right. Okay. So let's talk about what advice you would give to someone that is starting their fitness journey. Oh, okay. Um, I would say first, find some support because we all need encouragement. We all need to have some sort of instruction if you're just getting started. Because first thing, you want to avoid injury. So even if it's you don't have the money for a personal trainer, you sign up at the Y and you ask some of the trainers to help you because that's what why they're there. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to cost a whole lot, but get some support. When I was first trying to lose weight, I was on my own. I didn't have much other than my husband and, you know, supportive, but he didn't mm -hmm. understand like the, the, the day to day when you're, you know, you're not sure what you're doing is going to get you where you'd like to go. And it was a lot of trial and error for me. And I, for, especially in the nutrition area, how to fuel myself properly to get through those workouts and that was extremely helpful to me. So I'd say first and foremost, get some support. Okay. 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 Give us, hmm, give us one of your favorite snacks. Mm. Favorite snacks. I think about that. <laughs> I love plantains. So okay. Plantains and hummus is a good one. Nice. Okay. I've never had. Okay. Okay. Together, or are we talking about separate? Together. Oh, okay. I might have to check that out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So one of the questions I have is how do you encourage people around you to get healthy? Because we all know that we have people in our village that might not be healthy or they might not be taking their health seriously. How do you encourage them? What do you say? Do you not say anything? What do you do? Yeah, that's that's interesting because you know you can't push push too too much, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's as easy enough as leaving the door open. So it's a lot of people in my neighborhood. They might you know compliment, oh, you know, you looking really good. What are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I wait for an opening, um, but as a health coach we're trained not to direct. So I like to just let things happen in terms of conversations. I have conversations with people at the gym all the time and they don't know what I do. So that sometimes is an opening to say, you know, how have you been feeling? You know, how's it going? And, oh, you know, I'm getting through these workouts and I'm, I'm, you know, low on energy. You know, you want to talk about it? Do you want to you know, would you like some help? I'm, I'm available. I'm here, you know, just telling people, letting them know that you're available to support them, but not tell them what to do can sometimes open a door for a conversation. Love it. Love it. So what is next on your fitness journey? What goal are you working towards? Ah, a lot of strength goals, Leslie. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of strength goals. Um, I have one of my coaches, she put together a program for me. So I'm hoping to increase my bench, my deadlift, my front squats, because I can't do back squats. Um, okay. So 
hoping to get into some, hopefully a 225 deadlift oh, by the end of the year. That's a big one. Look, there you go. You just manifested. You spoke it out loud. So we yeah, I did. 25 deadlift. Go ahead and send us the video I so did. we can give you your kudos. <sighs> this video will be out by then. So this will be your mark that you'll be able to have for sure. Awesome. So this part of our segment is called turning tables. Okay. Okay. And this part of the segment, you get to ask me any question that you would like me to answer. Okay. Well, so tell me what you got. Yeah. Well, you tell me about your fitness journey. Um, in short, I was 325 pounds at my heaviest, um, completely overweight with happy being the fat girl, but not so happy inside being the fat girl. And randomly I was strolling online and I told my spouse, like, look, we should go try this. This sounds so cool because the LA fitness wasn't working. The planet fitness wasn't working. The casual walks in the park weren't working and the random tennis matches were not working. Huh. Um, so I needed something that was going to work. And we went to a CrossFit gym and it was black owned. We were met by a black guy. His name was Aaron. Love Aaron. He needs to come back to the CrossFit space. And we just started out there. Um, they called us the comeback kids all the time because we would go and come like two weeks and we would be gone for two more weeks. So just life. And when I started seeing results, um, I wanted to stick with it. And I was in corporate America. It was very hard, but it was a way for me to relieve stress. Um, then I was let go from corporate America because mm. I would not compromise my integrity. Mm, um, I was a property you. manager at the time and the place was rat infested. And I told the owner that I'm not going to turn my cheek or turn my ear because most of the people that occupied the unit looked like me. Mm. Um, so I left corporate America, well, got kicked out of corporate America 30 days prior to my wedding. And, wow. um, I just kind of set sail. I started my own business, became a business coach, um, virtual assistant. And then randomly we were still in CrossFit. I had turned another corner, really got locked in on my mind nutrition and I needed to do a competition. I was ready. I was finally ready. So we did it team competition it was a team of four and we did that competition in north georgia and we were the only all black team of course and of course we had the culture we had the sauce it was great and i saw like three or four other black people in the room on all white teams and i told my friends like this is crazy like where are the black people at like i'm not used to this my whole being is around black people in CrossFit that's all I've ever known mm. and, and I told them I said let's start this group let's start this group we should start it on Facebook I think we should do it and they were like they weren't really interested I'm like okay fine no worries and I literally started the group I started messaging people and saying hey you should come and join my group and literally like in two weeks I had like 500 people and wow. then it just kept growing and growing and growing <laughs> so I when I thought about it, I'm like, what am I going to do with these people? I have no idea what I'm doing right now. And at the time we were called Melanin CrossFitters. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided like, I'm going to host a competition. Like the gym owner's like, we should host a competition. I'm like, okay, I've never done it, but I've hosted events and they're always great. So let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I hosted the first Atlanta Masters Classic, which I, we hope you can come to in the future. Yeah. And um, I had that year 50 athletes and probably like 300 spectators. And I was completely blown out of my mind. And I just recently looked at the photos because now we're on year three. Um, and there are people that I've seen like, he came? Like he's always tagging us in videos. I'm like, they came and I didn't even see them like my first year. So I was so engulfed in stuff. So literally that's been my fitness journey. Um, Became a CrossFit coach, became a weightlifting coach because I love it so much. And then now fitness has just become a huge part of my life. And mm -hmm. here I am just trying to create change for people of color and allies that want help and maybe can't afford it or they don't know what to do or they just need support. So, and just connecting coaches with clients and clients with coaches and coaches with them. So that's really it in a nutshell. Well, that's a lot, lady. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. So inspiring. 
Thank you. Thank you. What other questions do you have for me? Um, what has been the, the biggest challenge for you so far that you've overcome? Mm. The biggest. I don't know. I have like three that are all on the same level. Mm. Um, the biggest challenge. Maybe probably getting my cease and desist letter from CrossFit headquarters. Um, Interesting. I think taking a step back to reevaluate, even though I was going to change the name prior to, I think that played a huge role um, in me just quieting myself. Nope, I take that back. That's not my biggest challenge. Nope, take it back. My biggest challenge was 2021 when I lost my uncle unexpectedly in August. And then I lost my dad probably like in December oh, after that so sorry. and then after that I um after that I lost my gym family um because I had to remove myself from the gym and then after that in April I lost my grandmother mm -hmm. and then I attempted to move into a new house and after that my spouse had surgery and after that I had surgery so literally that was probably the hardest thing emotionally. I think just dealing with so many losses yes, yeah. was very huge for me. Um, and I think I still process that a lot differently. I think one of the biggest things I think coming out of it is just, you know, you've been sharing space with so many people and then they're no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just different. And it just creates a different change, a different environment for you. So to be able to pick up the pieces after that and just, try to create something and I really feel like the group um which many people probably don't know but the group um on Facebook and on Instagram really just held me together and they held me down during that point just by being able to post and stuff like that when I didn't want to work out I wasn't feeling like working out or mm -hmm. my lift wasn't good enough I missed the lift because I wasn't focused so just being in that space alone um, was probably the most challenging time that I've ever had. Mm. Mm. That is a lot to carry. <laughs> so yeah. What other questions do you have for me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so what, what's your vision? What, what is your vision for this space? I'm curious. So the vision is big. Um, but the reward, I think, is even bigger. So ideally, in probably like next year, I'm working on that. Um, I would like to have a gala to where all of us come out, whether that's allies, people of color. We have a weekend maybe filled with like a couple of talks during the day on Saturday. And then in the evening, we're in our black tie affair with sneakers and just having fun, maybe a silent auction and just talking about what's to come. Um, I would like to get fitness spaces outside if possible for people to be able to work out because one thing that COVID taught us is that you need to be self-sufficient mm -hmm. and you can't always think that the gym is going to be open and available to you at That's any right. time. So I think having spaces for people to work out um, free of charge would be absolutely great. Or even if they have to log on to an app for like $5.99 a month and hey, I need to go to the park and do this workout then I think that's ultimately great. Um, I would like to host a team competition this year in September. Um, and then, then I would really like to start supporting gym owners because I don't think gym owners and coaches have enough support. Um, I talk to a lot of people. They always tell me, I want to open up a CrossFit gym. And I'm like, no, don't open up a CrossFit gym. It's not that great. Like, no, no, no. Um, but I think it could be great um, if you set yourself up. But I think what happens is with CrossFit gym and gym owners that they put themselves in a box mm. and they only want to do one type of fitness modality. When we talk about fitness, we have to talk about fitness and being more inclusive ourselves. So rather right. than CrossFit, boot camp, hit, like yoga, all of that goes together. Mm -hmm. Like, so 
just create a fitness space that can be more inclusive. So mm-hmm. I would like to support gym owners and provide them with information, provide them with the ability to market and brand themselves appropriately, mm-hmm. just even getting their pricing down, helping them with client retention. Um, and then we really want to get the 12 week turning point program off and running. Um, we've created an amazing program. I've had people help me with this program that will facilitate a lot of things for a lot of people. It's scalable and sustainable. So 12 weeks of fitness, they will get a DEXA scan test pre and post wow. 12 weeks. They're also going to get nutrition coaching. So therefore they'll be able to have their macro factor for those 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. They'll be able to do a fitness um, group. So they'll be able to do hybrid or completely in person. They'll have therapy sessions as well to talk about their relationship with food and how to grocery shop and how other influences can affect your overall eating. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have access to yoga. So we're going to touch every single aspect with our program. So I would like to have their program off and running and hire people of color that are enthusiastic about seeing change in other people. Wow. That's big dreams. I love it. (laughs) So, yes. So I guess we're going to conclude this call, but Leslie, this has been absolutely great. It's been definitely refreshing for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, You're doing huge things um, for for yourself and for your community. Um, And it was just so, so inspiring to hear your story. And of course, I'm cheering for you. Uh, much, much success in all of your endeavors, of course. Thank you so much. So before we go, can you tell people how they can get in contact with you? If you're taking on new clients, what is the best way for them to get the health coach Leslie on their team? Yes. Well, I do have a website that you can contact me through. It's um, healthcoachpa, as in Pennsylvania.com. That easy. Perfect. Make sure you all check out her website, health coach, PA, as in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. dot com. Leslie That's will me. be there to answer all your needs. So thank you so much, Leslie. I appreciate you so very much. Until next time, we will definitely be in contact with Leslie to find out what she's doing, probably in a couple months or a couple of weeks. Who knows? Thank you so much for having me, Leslie. You're welcome. <laughs>